In his book, chapters 11 and 12 of his book, Peace, Prosperity, and the Coming Holocaust, Dave Hunt does an excellent job of pointing out Hitler's association with the occult. The leading Nazis, he says, were all convinced that National Socialism was a new religion that was destined to rule the world and establish a new age. Hitler himself said, whoever sees in National Socialism nothing but a political movement doesn't know much about it. We shall wash off the Christian veneer and bring out a religion peculiar to our race. It was clear that Rudolf Hess's religion replaced God <coughs> with Hitler. French academician Louis Bertrand, a convert to Nazism, exulted in his newfound Messiah, quote, What sovereign, what national hero has ever been acclaimed, adulated, adored, and worshipped as has Hitler? This little man in the brown shirt, followed by his cortege, there's something altogether different from mere popularity. This is religion. In the eyes of his admirers, Hitler is a prophet, a partaker of the divine. Had it not been for a few miscalculations, Hitler could conceivably have conquered the world. Although he failed in that grandiose ambition, he was worshipped, if ever a man was. That is what gives Hitler special significance for our analysis the fanatical, blind submission that most of Germany gave to him, embracing with wild enthusiasm his most insane whims. Germany's fawning, mindless adulation of Hitler would seem to offer an instructive example of the very kind of worship which the Bible predicts the whole world will give to the Antichrist. As William Shirer, author of The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and an astute observer who saw it all happen, wrote, quote, Today, as far as the vast majority of his fellow countrymen are concerned, Hitler has reached the pinnacle never before achieved by a German ruler. He has become a myth, a legend, almost a god, with that quality of divinity which the Japanese people ascribe to their emperor. There's no normal explanation for the staggering mystery that was Hitler. An inept and bumbling ex-corporal with obsessive delusions rising out of obscurity to make the entire world tremble. Bewildered historians have asked the question, how could a man so ignorant, so enslaved by stupid dogmas have achieved such practical success? Yet this comic figure with the bobbing mustache and the frantic gestures outmaneuvered the world's leaders time and again with his insane boldness, conquered Europe with ridiculous swiftness, and held the destiny of nations in his mad grip. There is neither political, psychological, nor any other ordinary answer to the enigma that was Adolf Hitler. When it came to swaying a huge audience, the nation, the world, no human was Hitler in the nation, the world, no human was Hitler's equal. During his speech, he was like a medium in a trance. Afterwards, like a medium who had been drained by, his, by the spirits, Hitler would collapse, deathly pale and exhausted, and it would take several drafts of beer to revive him. Impounded by Allied intelligence after the fall of Berlin, the personal diary of Joseph Goebbels, who became Nazi minister of propaganda, reveals the hypnotic influence that Hitler exerted upon him when they first met. Quote, he is the creative instrument of fate and deity. I stand by him deeply shaken, recognize him as my leader. He is so deep and mystical, like a prophet of old. With such a man, one can conquer the world. My doubts vanish. Germany will live. Heil Hitler! But why was this unlikely little man in the brown shirt the one who completely mesmerized him? After meeting Hitler in 1941, the historian uh, Benoit uh, Macon declared in awe, quote, His eyes, so strange that at first they were all I saw. He had a way of looking at you which drew you to him. You felt sort of dizziness. At the Nuremberg trials, Marshal von Blomberg testified, It was almost impossible to contradict Hitler. He swept you along with him. His personal magnetism was tremendous. He had an enormous power of suggestion. Pointing out that his book, Mein Kampf, is a succession of rambling, banal, and intensely wearisome monologues by a thoroughly third-rate mind, 
Gerald Suster says, quote, whatever powers Hitler did acquire were wholly independent of his own intellect. And he adds, one does not acquire such power by accident. Someone who believes that will believe anything. One acquires it by patient training. The obvious question follows immediately. Training by whom and for what? There is overwhelming evidence that Hitler was adept at various forms of Eastern mysticism. And the very beliefs and practices that are evident today and that are practiced by the New Age movement are uh, evidence clearly indicates form the power base for Nazism and the everyday fare of tens of millions of people. The entire uh, new, uh, new Age movement, yoga, uh, chakras, astrology, reincarnation, vegetarianism, Zen, and other forms of a synchronistic mysticism that was practiced by the Nazi elite. We are much more susceptible to the deadly deception of the Antichrist than the world of Hitler's day was susceptible. And one of his earliest and most important teachers was the master occultist Dietrich Erhardt. The occult was Hitler's absorbing interest from his youth. And uh, uh, all of the great leaders in, his, uh, in Germany at that time were involved in the occult. Some of those closest to Hitler came to believe that he was manipulated by invisible forces, those unknown superiors, as the Nazi elite called them. In a 1934 speech, Rudolf Hess declared, quote, We believe that the Fuhrer is obeying a higher call to fashion German history. The higher call was not from God by any means, but from the unknown masters that Hitler served and feared. Historian Alan Bullock has written, quote, until the last days of his life, he retained an uncanny gift of personal magnetism which defies analysis. His power to bewitch an audience has been likened to the occult arts of the African medicine man or the Asiatic shaman. Hitler confided in the closest to him that he was under orders from higher beings who he often implied would not allow him to tell all that he knew of his unique mission. Jesus Christ came 1900 years ago to establish the kingdom of God in men's hearts. He was rejected and crucified. The instigator of that foul deed, in which we have all joined, is clearly involved in an all-out effort to establish his own kingdom. There can be little doubt that this is the world government which New Agers imagine will finally bring lasting peace and prosperity based upon inherent human goodness. As for that, here are Hitler's own words, quote, I had to encourage national feelings for reasons of expediency, but I was already aware that the nation idea could only have a temporary value. There will come when even, the day will come when even here in Germany what is known as nationalism will practically have ceased to exist. What will take its place in the world will be a universal society of masters and overlords. The Fuhrer's obsessive hatred with the Jewish race and his determination to wipe them from the face of the earth was more than the fanatical prejudice of a madman. It can only be understood in its occult origins and Eastern mystical roots. He talked of the thousand-year Reich, and he was determined to sacrifice the German people in his attempt to purify German blood and therefore restore their lost godhood. Voicing a lie that is as old as the Garden of Eden, yet is at the heart of today's New Age movement, Hitler declared, quote, Creation is not yet at an end. Man is becoming God. Man is God in the making. The man, of course, that Hitler had in mind was the blonde, blue-eyed German, and the stepping stone to his godhood was the sacrifice of the Jews. It is the chapter on the Aryan connection. He points out that the emphasis on Aryanism comes from ancient Hinduism, and he spends a great deal of time uh, pointing out how the two are related. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but I thought you'd be interested in, in this one portion. Most of all, it was Hitler's use of the swastika as the symbol of the Third Reich that won the admiration and loyalty of so many Hindus. As a matter of fact, he does point out that even today in India, 
that Hitler is revered and honored as a hero. There is no symbol more sacred to Hinduism than the swastika. The following words are engraved in a large stone monument honoring the swastika near Delhi, India. Quote, this symbol is most sacred and ancient. At least for more than the last 8,000 years, it has been the mark of Aryan civilization and culture. This symbol signifies an, impl an implied prayer for success, accomplishment, and perfection in every walk of life under the guidance of the Almighty. What could possibly be wrong with a symbol that signifies a prayer to the Almighty? Clearly everything depends on who this God is. Part of the religious catechism of each SS member, uh, which they had to learn and swear, went like this, quote, We believe in God. We believe in Germany, which he created in his world, and in the Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler, whom he has sent us. But God sent Hitler to the Germans. There could be no doubt that it was Brahman, the god of the Hindus. For in their catechism, the death's head SS also learned that, quote, the only living being that exists in, is the cosmos or the universe. All other beings are only the various forms of the living universe. So it was the Aryan god of Hinduism who willed Hitler upon the world. Heinrich Himmler made this clear when he declared, It has been ordained by the karma of the Germanic world that Hitler should wage war against the East and save the Germanic peoples. A figure of greatest brilliance has become incarnate in his person. There are many in the New Age movement who would deny that they are a part of any movement at all, and they would also deny that they believe anything even remotely related to Hitler's Aryan occultism. They're allowing themselves to be deceived by labels. As long as our terms are sufficiently modern, we are on safe ground. Yoga can, we can label as psycho-cybernetics, and black magic we can call applied mind dynamics, and this makes them uh, respectable. Unfortunately, in considering Adolf Hitler, we're also forced to consider the possibility that the world of spirits and demons may have some objective existence. Well, you can see, and he goes on in the next chapters to point out that there is not one iota difference between what Adolf Hitler called National Socialism and what we would call Communism today. It is also a one-world system of one-world domination. And it is a part of the satanic conspiracy. There is, we hear people talk about the Rothschild conspiracy and about the a Trilateral Commission conspiracy. That's all a lot of idiotic claptrap. There's a satanic conspiracy. That's what there is. And it takes multitudes of forms, all of which are a part of the total satanic conspiracy. And it's evidenced by these religions 